Hello YouTube, I hope everybody's doing great and I have almost finished my next machine that I wanted to do for a long time. It is, uh, as you can see, a power hacksaw. I did have, uh, but before that, I wanted to remind you or tell you that I have another Black Friday sale apparently the first one i did a week too early so it is to be the last weekend of november which is now and so i do have another sale on my tindy store with 10 percent off and uh, i will link the video the previous video where i showed a whole bunch of gadgets that i built that are not in my tindy store that are made to order and if you like to check them out, please uh, look in the description and click the link. So now uh, I'm trying to have a very small room here and I try a new way of or new setup to show you the machine I built. So as you might know, I do like or love aluminum extrusion profiles and that is what this thing is based on and the round plate you see that's actually a previous project that did not work out and uh, the long aluminum profile with the three holes and the two long the one longer one and the shorter one are actually uh, profiles that I uh, that I had on hand and the holes you see well I have to look, um, that's gonna be really weird because I'm looking at my camera but if I go to the machine I don't know what I'm seeing. So anyway, these were the uh, bearings that were in here and here and that was a hole for a ball nut screw. So those were the holes. I was initially covered up with some carbon fiber tape. But I kind of like the look of it and uh, I will keep it like that. I will not cover it up. So anyway, now you see me most likely halfway in here. So now I have to take off my glasses. So let me show it to you in the profile. I will. Now I have to put this in my hand because it's not gonna work like that. I cannot see what I'm showing. So, okay. Let's get up close and dirty. So where do we start? Let's start at the bearings that hold this. Maybe I should turn off the zoom. Okay, that's even worse. That's no, okay. One one zoom so these are the bearings the pillow block bearings that i used with a 16 millimeter shaft and uh, these holders that screw down to the profiles the profiles are screwed down to this wood base for now these were the holes that i just covered up with screws and uh, this is absolutely sturdy there is no play whatsoever left and right obviously only up and down so this came out and the thing is i don't have a welder i'm using profiles aluminum profiles so that's why i want everything to be screwed down securely and uh, it definitely is securely screwed down and have this one brace that i bought afterwards and this acts as a stop so it won't fall down and here i have also now i need my hand i have a stop for the top because otherwise when this turns it would hit the bottom of the profile and i have a really simple stop for keeping it up with this one screw here so now it stays up and i can mount my stock and cut it and for the next uh, important part is this linear rail i had also left over and this gave me 
a perfect moving um, rail with no play whatsoever and this steel uh, profile linear profile also added a very uh, the weight to it so it will keep on the workpiece and not to jump around and the next thing is the mechanical connection between the saw and I use these I don't even know how they're called and I use anyway you see what I'm talking about I use these to make the connection movable connection some use a flat piece of steel like I have here which is actually from a, a L angle this is the first one I did which was too long so I made the second one shorter because it did hit on the bottom of the um, profile here and this and yeah other people use over here that and then put bearings in here and I wanted to do it simpler and it worked and I have the motor there I will talk about motor in a minute and I use this belt HDT 5 belts that I also used on my CNC lathe and it's perfect and it just as you can see moves perfectly but there is no possible way to slip on this um, this pulley I actually pulled off of my lathe because I had this as a spare and it I was just the luck that it was exactly 40 millimeters the size of the motor shaft and this pulley I pulled off of the lathe like I said it's a 48 tooth and this is 20 tooth which the ratio is too small I need a bigger ratio so I can crank up the speed and get more power for cutting anyway this is also holding in a bearing block and the pin is there and <clears throat> yes you see I screwed it just down onto the um, pulley with two screws I put a little spacer so it's mostly parallel and to not put too much strain I also put some grease into these uh, joints I don't know how they ball joints are they called ball joints please correct me if I'm wrong um, anyway and I also added a limit switch which is not connected yet which is here to turn off the machine once it's cut uh, the pro once it's done cutting and over here we have uh, the motor and this was a very 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 lucky find on a raid on a rainy day on the flea market here in town which we have once a week and this is a VF, uh, VFT a three-phase motor made in Holland in 19 Netherlands uh, in 1982 can we get focus probably not anyway and when I asked the guy who was selling it if it's working he said yes there was some cable connected to it with a plug and one wire was loose so i just opened it up and once i saw the inside with the six terminals i knew and no condens uh, condensator no what's it called capacitor <laughs> with no capacitor inside of here i knew it was a three-phase motor which was perfect because i can regulate the speed i did clean it up it was pretty dirty uh, i did not paint it yet i just want to uh, get everything working and then I will paint it but I took it all apart and painted it and uh, let me pause the video for one second here okay so uh, this was actually the pulley that was on here and uh, you might know these taper 
tape or something um, mount and this was actually on here the wrong way I don't know how they got it on there but I had to use a pulley puller to get it off luckily I was able to get it off because I mean some genius put it on the wrong way because otherwise if you put it on there with a the keyway you you use these uh, screws to pull this onto the pulley and it tightens down and there's a grip and when you want to loosen it you take both out and use one of the screws put it in here and then you screw this middle piece out and it loosens up and then you can just pull off the whole pulley so i don't know how they manage it to put it the wrong way on there but luckily i was able to get it out uh, at first i did not open it uh, i connected it to my <clears throat> uh, VFT on my belt grinder because I'm short one VFT with these nice uh, aviation plugs and um, it ran nicely with no noise and then I opened it up and wanted to clean it or see what's inside or how it looks inside and I took all the old grease out put it back together and then it started making a clackering noise um, and the problem was the front bearing inside of here was worn out so I changed out the bearing but also the bearing seat on this plate was worn out so it was the bearing was moving inside of this uh, casing and then I used I made a shim with this uh, can uh, aluminum aluminum can and that I also use on my lathe for holding stock down without marring them and it was the perfect thickness and it went in there it was snug and now the motor runs like new so and i paid around 22 23 dollars for this motor which was a uh, really on a rainy day it was raining and normally they don't stay at the flea market when it's raining the people pack up their stuff and that was a really lucky find i never saw a motor like this before i never seen one since then so anyway because i started building this and put this all together and i had not the motor and i did didn't have the system here for the uh, transmission and it just came into place that i got the motor and then i found this piece that fit the 40 millimeter shaft and then the plan was born to make this similar to the to my cnc lathe and i did and this is it and I also bought this uh, nice vise a relatively cheap one but it has this <clears throat> jaw with the cutouts for round stock and I really like it and I did make some cuts oh by the way this blade is an old blade and I thought I'll oh, buy a new one right I bought some and those were even worse they were very cheap so i put the old blade which is probably dull but it works and this is the cut test cut i made and without adjusting it for uh, total trueness this is what i have it's not 100 percent square but i have adjustability on my vice to adjust it square to the blade and I can also adjust the blade itself, the saw itself, over these screws here to adjust it this way. And that way on the vise. So I will get it chewed in all the way. I have some uh, hex nut screws, which I know hex nuts are those. I think I will have to change those out against these. Um, so I have a little more to do and I put these corner brackets here to limit the movement so the bear, linear bearing block will not fall out because I didn't have it connected to anything so it was just moving freely. So that's done and oh I did find a relatively inexpensive VFD in a way that you mount it into an enclosure which is uh, on the way i did order it and then i will obviously connect 
this to the VFT and put the VFT here somewhere and then I will be able to connect the limit switch as well oh and I did um, 3d print this uh, grip you might remember if you saw my scene uh, my belt grinder that I used a tab holder that is turning on there and I redesigned the grip so now it's just uh, solid on here with a 12 millimeter shaft mounted again onto the profile it's just the beauty of the profile that you can just screw it down and uh, just getting up these end caps i had left over when i ordered these profiles and <clears throat> i don't put it on right away on 100 percent because they were hard to get out so I might leave it on this side but I can also move it on this side if you want but I think this side is easier so I can place stock on here I also want to make a uh, raise it over here so the stock I'm cutting is uh, supported on this side too because if you cut something and it's short it like this for example if you cut that it just falls off and then the blade pushes towards the outside and doesn't cut the bottom correctly or just uh, strays out of it and so i will do that and once i get the vft i will mount it i'm not showing it to you while cutting right now because it's not 100 percent done but it does obviously cut but, but like I said, I will change the ratio here to a bigger pulley on the back and a smaller pulley on the front. Uh, this is 20, this is 48. I have 2.4 ratio and I will uh, get a 16 and a 16 and 60 on the back. So I have a larger ratio which slows down the motor even more without going too much down on the VFD. So I have more power to run it so anyway if you have any questions about this build which is uh, fairly simple but you just have to find the right parts to use which I made one mistake and thought I can make it even simpler by using these um, bearing blocks Not bearing blocks anyway but this one has of course play in here and that was just wobbling in the front and I was thinking first to put this underneath and have that one um, shaft going through there and uh, but it did not work out and then I went back to this solution and this is this is like um, absolutely stable and I saw some restoration videos on older power hex saws and they use brass bushings and uh, brass against steel I mean brass is gonna wear out in here nothing's gonna wear out there's just no way to wear out so anyway like I said if you have any questions I like this grip and I will replace this grip on my belt grinder as well and I will put this uh, STL file on my Thingiverse account so you can download it from there if you like and um, this is it uh, I cannot show you running also because I'm in my room here and the belt grinder is in the other room and I have absolutely no way of filming over there it's just uh, not nice so anyway um but once i have the vft on this baby here i will of course show you cutting it and also with the different pulleys so i can have a more powerful blade um, yeah so anyway uh, if you would like to see more of my videos hit the subscribe button on the bottom and the notification bell so get it notified and um, 
this is it for today thanks for watching and take care everybody and once more if you made it this far which i doubt uh there is a 10 percent thanks not thanksgiving black friday sale going on my tindy store right now take care everybody